Hi everybody, welcome back to Calvary Kids Connect. I'm teacher Phoebe and today we have a fun packed video for you guys this week. First, we will be going over our memory verse. Then we will go into worship and praise so we can praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I get a whoop whoop? I assume you guys said it. After that, we will be having a teaching by teacher Chris, and then we will be followed up by a puppet show by Monica and Ryan. But before we begin all that fun stuff, we have to pray. So everybody put your hands together and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today and every day, Lord. I thank you so much for bringing our special friends here with us to watch it, even though it's through a screen, Lord. Bless this lesson and let us learn from your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go on to that memory verse. Hey guys, so today's memory verse is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 through 58. Let's get to practicing. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not vain in the Lord. Let's try that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 through 58. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, guys, great job practicing, and I hope you guys memorize it. Great job with that memory verse review. You guys are doing great, and I see the progress happening. Remember, if you still need a little bit of practice and you're still a little rusty-dusty just like me, Grab your Bible and read along with the scripture. Next, we will be going into our worship and praise. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them.
Joy with me. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the worship and the nice songs that got to be played. Let's move on to learning about God's Word with Teacher Chris. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Excited to be here and to be able to get into God's Word with you today. And just hope you guys are all doing well. Um, today, we're going to talk about prayer and look at some of Jesus' prayers when he was here on earth with us. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time to be in your word, Lord, and thank you for your son, Lord, who came to earth willingly to uh, die on the cross for our sins, Lord, that we could have eternal life. Lord, we thank you for your love <clears throat> and just um, how much you love us, Lord, and that you're willing to give your son uh, for us, Lord, and just how you love and care for us in our lives and all the blessings that you bestow upon us, Lord. We're so grateful for that, and we're grateful that you we have your word to learn more about you, Lord, to, um, and that you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us uh, to live in obedience to you and to become more like Christ, Lord. We just pray you bless this time in your word, Lord, and I pray for everyone and their families that they're doing well and that you just continue to watch out over them and protect them and uh, keep them safe, Lord. And I pray for any hurts or pains or struggles they're going through, Lord, that you be with them. You are our rock and our strength and our foundation, Lord, and I just pray you bring healing and uh, relief to any situation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, so uh, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46, and this is um, Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. So let me go ahead and read those verses to you. Uh, Matthew 26, starting at 36, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <clears throat> so um, probably one of the most difficult times in Jesus's ministry here on earth where he, Jesus is God, so he fully understands what he's facing, the pain he'll endure, and what it means to be crucified and uh, we just see as it says uh, in the verses here verse 38 my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death so what does he do during one of his most challenging times is he goes to the father in prayer and you'll notice that um, Jesus goes to him three times um, praying for the same thing basically and that is if there is any other way let it be but I don't want what my will I want yours and I think we can learn uh, well, that's a great model for us in our prayer. Uh, in our lives, I, we always want comfort and we want things to go as we plan, but that isn't um, always what God's will is. But we can take confidence and comfort in the fact that God's will is perfect and God works all things for good. And Jesus reflects that for us in praying three different times amidst one of the most difficult and challenging circumstances he will face on earth that he wants God's will over his. Uh, the second thing I think we can learn in there is uh, prayer can prevent us from falling into the temptations of the world and it strengthens us spiritually. Um, what we see here in uh, verse 41, Jesus tells the disciples, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Well, the temptation, there's many temptations, you know, but basically what he's saying is um, give into the flesh. You know, so in our lives, maybe that's... Um, Laziness, You know, the Bible doesn't want us to be lazy. It wants us to uh, be productive and work for the Lord. Uh, but our, our flesh says, I'd like to sit on the couch and watch an extra TV show or play some video games. So 
Um, so prayer is, a, is something powerful for us that uh, strengthens us spiritually and helps us to overcome these temptations through the, the strength of Christ and the Holy Spirit um, to live in such a way that God wants us to and strengthen us spiritually and help us to be more like Christ. And the last thing from here is um, the Jesus goes back three times, you know, so there's, it's not the repetition uh, that I think is the learning lesson here that he does it repeatedly. It's just, where does Jesus go when he's hurting you know, when he's struggling? He goes to God, he goes to God, the father, and we should be praying all, all the time. You know, we should, we can pray prayers of joy. We see that in the Psalms where the psalmists are just praising God and thankful for him. Um, but also in, in our most difficult times, you know, because maybe at those times we, uh, go to other things, you know, whether it's, uh, taking a, a vacation or, <clears throat> you know, having a good meal or something like that. But our true comfort and our true peace and joy is in the Lord and it comes from him. And we see Jesus go back three separate times. In addition to that, I think that, um, all three of those times, Jesus prays for God's will to be done over his too, you know, so, I think that's a true desire of Christ and, and that it should be a true desire of ours too. And also it helps remind us uh, whose will is most important, you know, as we go through life and and uh, we make plans and we hope for these things to come to pass or we want these trials to go away. Um, it's a good prayer and a good reminder for us that God's will would, would occur over ours you know, because it's perfect. Next. Uh, let's look at John chapter 17, verses 1 through 4. Um, starting at verse 1, it says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. <clears throat> and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So um, this is another prayer here where we read um, Jesus is resp uh, responding. Uh, it's also around the time uh, leading up to his crucifixion. Um, so what's Jesus' response to the cross? Well, as we read, it's that uh, God would be glorified and that Jesus would be brought back into glory with him. So Jesus says he's, he's completed the work on earth that God gave him to do. And now he's just accepting what's coming, um, that what he's agreed to um, well before the creation of the earth. And he's just asking that God would be glorified through his actions. And that's an awesome prayer. You know, I think that's all of our prayer that as Christians, the way we would live our lives would be glorifying to God um, for the sole purpose of being a, a good witness to others too. Because when we live our lives in a way that's glorifying to the Lord, um, people notice we, we're separated. You know, we are lights. We live as a light in the world when we live in that way. And it gives us opportunity to be able to share the gospel with people. And so it's an, it's a great prayer to pray that we, we'd live our, our, live our lives in such a way that's glorifying to the Lord. Um, and then also that he would be brought back into glory with God. So um, Jesus knows where he's going. He's going back to heaven to be with the Father. And uh, he's praying that, you know, he's, he would just be brought back into that glory with him, which is the hope that we all have, too, that we would be brought back into the presence of the Lord um, when we pass on and enter into heaven and that we'd be able to witness and partake of his glory. Uh, John chapter 17, a little bit further down, verses 20 through 21, we have another prayer. Uh, verse 20 says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So now we see Jesus praying for the believers. Um, but the, the really cool part about that is Jesus doesn't, isn't just praying for current believers at the time. It says, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So through what the word that the disciples share, them going out and telling the gospel, Jesus has prayed for you and I in that as... Uh, we heard the word, responded to it, and came to faith in Christ. So um, just pretty awesome uh, to see that there. Uh, we also noticed that Jesus is praying that there be unity amongst the church and amongst the believers. He wants us all to be one, uh, to love one another, care for one another, 
um, and so that we could do his work faithfully too. If we're if we were fighting or having problems all the time, we'd never be focused on the work of Christ and uh, that He's given us to go out and share the good news. Um, in addition, uh, Jesus prayed that believers would be unified with God to witness to the world. Um, so it says that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be one in us. So Jesus wants us to be unified with uh, the body of Christ, the church, to be unified with one another, and for that body to be unified with God. Um, walking with him in faith, learning about him, building that relationship with him as a witness to the world. And the, <clears throat> as it says there, that the world may believe that you sent me. So through the unity amongst the church and our unity and our relationship with God, um, we live as an example, as a witness to those around us. We're able to tell the good news about Jesus Christ. So, um, so those are three uh, prayers that we see that Jesus prays. Um, and, we, and like I said, we can learn a lot from that. We, can, we learn that uh, praying for God's will over ours is important. It's God's will is perfect. Um, we learn that Jesus uh, wanted to glorify his Father, um, and we can pray for that glory uh, for the same for our lives, that our lives would be glorifying to the Lord, that it would be pleasing to him. Uh, and then we pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray for the believers, that there would be unity amongst us, uh, not just now, but in the future, as Christ did. And just that, that the believers, the body of Christ, would be unified with the Lord, um, and that it would be a witness to the world, and God's love would be demonstrated through us uh, to, to the world, and that God would be able to use that to save more people. So... Uh, Enjoyed spending the time with you guys today, and uh, let's just wrap up in prayer before we begin, before we end. Father, we just uh, ask that you'd help us to grow in our prayer lives, Lord. You gave us uh, Jesus Christ, the perfect example, Lord, and uh, we pray that your will will be done in our lives, Father, uh, that we would seek your will in everything that we do, because we know it's good, Lord. We know it's perfect. We know that it all works together for good, regardless of whether or not we understand it, Lord. So we just ask that that um, as Jesus did in the garden, Lord, that your will would be done over ours, Lord. And we pray that we glorify you in how we live our lives, Lord, that our actions, our words, um, how we pray, you know, how we worship, all those things would, would glorify you and be to your glory, Lord. And Lord, uh, also just pray for unity amongst the believers, Father. And we just thank you for for the body of Christ, that we can have fellowship with them. And we just pray that we would be in unity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Thank you, Teacher Chris, for delivering God's word. Now let's move on to the puppet show with Monica and Ryan. Monica, I have a problem. Oh, I know. I've been telling you, that thing on your foot is not normal, and you need to go see a doctor or at least tell mom about it. I'm not talking about my foot, and my foot is perfectly fine. Hmm, all right. I'm sorry. Then, is the problem not being able to focus in school? I pay plenty of attention in school, and my grades are spectacular. Hmm, I don't know if I would count a C as spectacular. Well, I would. It's only one class, and my teacher says I'm making excellent progress from what my old reading scores used to be. And progress and participation is the most important thing in my book. Okay, so if the problem is not at school, and because you're making good progress, then your problem must be about losing the highest score at the arcade. Okay, the racing game was defective and Brian beat me one time. Anyways, it's not the problem at all. But I'll b be back there on Saturday to make a new high score. Anyways, we're getting off topic. That's not my problem. All right, sorry. I'll just listen. What's the problem? Well, since me and Brian have been going to the arcade, we've seen the vending machine. And it has that delicious chocolate. And at first, he was trying to be funny, so Brian kicked it. And one fell out by accident. So we took it and ate it. But we felt bad after. And we pinky swore that we were not going to steal again. But then the next day, we saw the vending machine, and we... <gasps> no, you didn't! 
Yes, Monica, we stole it again. And I keep watching. And then we make a promise not to do it again, but then the cycle continues and continues. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to do either, but it reminds me that in any problem or situation we have, we need to refer back to God's word. So Audio Bible, please read from the book of Matthew, please. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. The prayer in the garden. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but you, as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest, you're, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And so he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. End. Now I understand you're not Jesus, and we establish that every single time we talk about the Bible. But the Bible is made for us to understand our own lives, no matter how small the issue is. See how the disciples kept on sleeping when Jesus said not to, and going into temptation? So what did Jesus do instead? Jesus prayed. Yup, he prayed. And even though the Son of God, who was perfect, he always drew his strength from God through prayer and meditating on God's word. And even when Jesus found himself struggling with the flesh and temptations, he looked unto God first. And we need to do the same because Jesus was perfect. And although he never committed any sins, because he was perfect, we need to do all we can to stay on the path we are called to be on. And we need to draw our strength from Christ, who is perfect. Tomorrow, when me and Brian go to the arcade, I'll bring some money so we can pay the people at the arcade for what we took. That sounds great. Talk to Brian about it, too. You guys are both saved. And if you guys both praise, then you guys can both grow from this through God. Sounds good, but... What if we get in trouble? Well, I think you should talk to mom about it. Just be honest and have your money just in case. Mom will know what to do. Kids, it's time to eat. Come on down. Well, now seems like a good time to tell her. Mm-hmm. Well, now that was a fun puppet show video. I hope you guys had fun for this week's lesson that you guys learned a lot. But remember guys, if you are tired of the scream and you're ready to come back to church, our His Kids ministry is now up and running according to the CDC guidelines. So we will be wearing our mask, have our temperatures taken, but most importantly, have fun in, less, in learning about the lesson that week. So if you guys wanna come on down for the live show, then come on down. But if not, we will keep these videos up and running. But let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, Lord. And thank you so much for bringing us here this week to learn more about your word, Lord. I pray that you bless every single one of these viewers that is watching you, Lord. Bless their families and keep them safe throughout the coming next coming weeks, Lord. I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit so we can shine our lights with everyone we meet, Lord. And teach us the importance of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. Thank you guys for coming for this week. And see you guys next week.